Welcome back, Rock Harmonica Lessons number three, rock-harmonica.com for blog material. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and do a third video back-to-back, uh, -back. so we got about a 45-minute lesson here. Um, lesson number one, introduce the Mixolydian scale, talk just a little bit in very simplistic terms about uh, playing that in addition to the blues scale. Uh, lessons number two then covered that the whole range of the harp and essentially unlocked that you can play the whole harp now. You can play holes one through ten. And uh, in addition to your blues bends, you can play all the blow on draw notes, holes one through ten, and they'll start fitting over your blues material and give you a rock feel. Uh, lesson three started to go through, uh, if you haven't seen that already, is uh, the mixolydian and the high end of the harp between holes six and nine. And the big takeaway was start developing your own melodic ideas around that. And then um, we started to talk about, okay, so how did guys take those ideas and then get into the flash factor? Uh, this lesson here is going to talk then about um, a couple additional notes uh, on the high end of the harp that can create some wow factor. Um, if you've learned to blow bend at all, you'll, you'll be able to handle this. Um, I have a read already on single read bends, but we'll talk a little bit about that too. So we talked the high end of the harp, and before we get into the blazing fast stuff, uh, I want you to sound at, at least dynamic um, or a little more sophisticated. Uh, and we'll give you a couple tips there. So, again, the scale we're working with and, um, you know, trying to learn to improvise or just navigate is just the mixolydian mode on the high end of the harp, starting with sixth blow. If I can find the note. Okay. And so, any note between six and nine, blow or draw, we're okay with. We can play that over a blues. It'll start giving us a rock feel. Um, you know, check out any of the blues stuff. Jason Ritchie does some of that. Pat Ramsey does some of that. Sugar Blue is a great example of, of using the Mixolydian mode over blues songs. He's also a very established and very amazing uh, traditional blue, uh, blues player. Um, and our birthdays are only a day apart, if that's of any significance to what makes somebody cool. Uh, so just a stock uh, C Honer Rocket. And we're going to talk a little bit about hole 10 then. What can we do with hole 10? Well, hole 10 works. Um, it works, um, but we don't have a lot of whale notes. And maybe that'll be our next lesson then. We've opened up the whole harp. I'm starting to get between holes on the harp. Where do I want to land? Uh, hole 6 through 10. Uh, now, now we've added the 10 blow. And the 10 drop. Neither of those is notes we really want to hammer on, but they're totally notes we can throw into a riff. Okay. Something just flew by the back of the screen. It was either a ghost or a rod or something foreign. No way it was something reasonable like dust. It had to be something crazy. Um... If you know me in real life, that would be a lot funnier than if you just know me on YouTube. Uh, but hole 10. We can play the blow and draw as part of riffs. Not notes we would necessarily want to land on, but we can throw those in. Uh, what, what else is up there? Well, we can play the 10 with the first bend, the half step bend. Okay. And we can play it bent all the way down. And we have the major third and the minor third there. So we can wail on the 10, and any if you can bend that note at all, you got a note you can wail on now. Because it'll either sound really cool and bluesy, like a whammer jammer. Okay? Or it'll sound very John Popperish, and uh, be a cool way to end a phrase. Okay? Uh, if you listen to Mountains Win Again or hook at the end of both those solos, I think he, he's wailing on the 10 blow bend if I remember right. So those would be examples of that. Um, so now we've added a couple of bends, right? We got we can play you know the, our blow draw patterns between six and nine and include hole 10, and we can also play the two available blow bends there, and all that will fit, okay? Now why would you do that? Well, you can add some flash factor. It's very cool to um, you know run up the harp or run up a lick, uh, we'll go back to that sugar blue one. And then we can tag on something a little higher. Okay. 
All I do is I start with a bit low, I bend down a little bit, put a little vibrato on it. Okay, I do that all the time. That's a cool well note. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot, a lot of time on like how I do the vibrato. I guess if people wanna know I can do a different lesson on that, but um, I tend to bend, I guess, from the front of my mouth. I'm using my tongue and I'm just waving it. I don't even care if I'm in pitch, because it sounds cool anyway, because I got the blue note there in blues, and if it's the major third, that's an okay note. I, I can be ambiguous with it, and it sounds awesome. Okay, when I jammed with Blues Traveler, there's a video of that online. Um, I tried really hard not to play high stuff on the high end of the harp, because I would have just sounded awful compared to him. Uh, so I tried to stay towards the bottom of the harp. Uh, but there's one time where... Um, we, we were kind of jamming back and forth and I just played that bend and held it for a long time and people thought that was cool. Um, he was playing way more sophisticated, awesome stuff at the same time, but, um, you know, it just kind of stands out. So there's some cool flash factor there. Um, you, you know, to occasionally hit that in a solo is really cool. Um, you know, as, as a well note, do you want to end every solo with that? No, we'll talk about that as we cover some of the phrasing stuff. Uh, which we'll do here um, after we've talked about some of the note choice. Maybe we'll, we'll do we'll do some phrasing stuff uh, before we get to some more embellishment and action pattern kind of stuff. That's the fun stuff to talk about anyway. That's really what I'm just trying to get to with the first few lessons. And so now I've opened up that whole octave. I can play things fast. I can play things slow. And I got that that uh, you know ten draw. I can or excuse me blow bend. I can wail on, and I, I'm not really worried about the pitch. Okay, what else can I do to add some, you know, cool inflection or some personality to some of the notes I'm playing? Because really, I mean, it's kind of stiff to just play a, a, a scale, even if you're playing a melody. You can say something fast or something slow. Okay, that's probably what we're doing if we're practicing this for the first time. Okay, now how do you make that sound cool and hip? Before you learn all the fast, you know, flashy stuff, um, you know, one way is to add inflection with the bend. So we did that on the 10th. Okay, and if you can add vibrato with that, then you're even cooler. Uh, you can do the same thing with the 9 and 8 blow bends. I'm going to dip into them to play some stuff. It's going to sound major. It's going to sound very John Popperish, um, But that will work over some of the blues stuff if, if I'm careful with how I use it. So I'm not going to play Jimmy Reed stuff. Okay, what I'm going to play is I'm going to just dip into some of that. Okay, so I dipped into the 9 blow bend up to 9 blow, which is a tonic. So great note to play. And then 9 draw, which is the 7th, which sounds, you know, it, it, it's a dynamic and it's a hip way to get into playing a very bluesy note. Okay, try starting a solo like that, right? I'm playing my blues stuff. I'm getting to the second turn. Um, or maybe it's even the first phrase of a solo. I'm going to be very Paul DeLay about it. I'm going to hit something high. I'm going to get back to the stuff by no. Okay. I can do the same thing with the eight. I got to be real careful with that. Um, but I can, you know, I can hit some of that too. Okay. Uh, I play the eight blow um, with a little bit of a bend and then I blow with a whole bit of bend, like with just reckless abandon, it's not very bluesy. I don't have a track behind me. I'm not trying to sound particularly bluesy. Um, if I'm not playing a blues song, I will play that all the time. If I'm playing a blues song, I probably wouldn't play it so much. Uh, the nine for sure, you know, I'd dip into. The eight I'd be real careful with, um, you know, over the one chord um, is, is I hit the changes and I get to the four. Obviously, I'm, you know, modulated to first position, kind of riffage. I can totally do that, but... Um, you know, a good place to start is with that 10 blow bend because you can't do it wrong. And then uh, if you're careful with the 9, um, that's a good dynamic practice. So, um, you know, I can I can use parts of blow bends or those dip bends, those same things we talked about down here. Okay. Um, and that, that's not octave to octave, right? I just played the same pattern and it sounded cool. And I start with the blow bend and I just wee loo. Okay. Uh, so you can use those dip bends on 9 and 8 for some inflection. That'll sound cool. Uh, the 10 blow bend, you can just wail away on. And you can add vibrato and bend it up and down. It's going to sound awesome.
Okay. Uh, what else can we do? Um, you know, if you're able to play with some touch and you got some vibrato going and, and you can play with some dynamic range, you can uh, hit that six and and you can, you know, create a crisp, very Chris McCulloch-like vibrato with the six by bending it up and down real fast. Okay, and if I'm playing something... Okay, um, so I can, like I did with the blow bends, I can do that with the six draw. But what I really want to hit on is um, adding some inflection and adding some personality, adding some dynamics with single reed bends. And really, what that's doing is recreating some of the bending you can do on a valve harp um, without having a valve harp. So again, just it's a stock um, rocket and C. If if you know me as a player beyond these lessons at all, um, I overblow, overdraw a lot. And uh, this harp is not customized to do those things, so I'm doing this and there's a little gapping. Okay, full disclosure, how can you not just do a little gapping? Uh, not even enough to throw it out of tune, I never retuned it. Um, but, but um, you know, you can do some cool things without being an overbend player. And uh, these are things that will sound awesome whether you're playing blues or rock. And um, what, what I can do is get to a draw note, like 8, okay, which is a great note to play. First note to run around. Um, uh, it, it's a note that Sugar Blue hits all the time to start some of his riffs. But what I can do is, well, how I do it, is I use the front of my mouth to bend with my tongue. And I, I try to bend the note a little bit without hammering it. Okay, now I might play, looks like I'm playing with a lot of expression sometimes, but I'm playing very lightly. And I'm actually bending that note. So it's not like a bend like this. Okay, but I'm bending it, you know, close to a semitone, like on a valve harp. Uh, if you can't do that, if you learn how to bend on a valve harp and then play a regular harp, it's very, very close to the same thing. And if you've got a high quality harp that's pretty airtight, even out of the box or with a little bit of gapping, okay, and on the draw notes, I can now start a, a bent vibrato. Very Chris McCulloch. I don't know how much single reed bending you did on the high end because you didn't always play a lot on the high end. But um, this is something that John Popper doesn't get a lot of credit for, but he's awesome at. He's always um, finding a way to do some of those isolated single read bends. Uh, Todd Parrott does that a lot. That's another good example. Howard Levy is a great example. Clint Hoover. Uh, you know, some of those guys I don't talk about a lot because they're not really rock players. They play some other stuff. But, uh, you know, if you want to sound really cool, uh, you know, adding some vibrato and personality... Now all of a sudden, again, we've opened up all these different notes and we have some of the same cool expressive techniques that we can use, that we would use on a, um, you know, on a, on a, um, a blues song on the bottom of the harp. Okay. And all I'm doing there, again, uh, for the vibrato part is I'm just moving my jaw and my tongue. So I can say, yeah, 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 yeah. And I can do that on eight, nine, ten. And what I'm doing is I'm getting really close to playing an overdrop. Okay, you can hear where the reeds are trying to pop for the overdrop. I know I've taken it too far. If I wanted to play the overdraw, this harp's not really set up to do that. Okay, that's coming more. There's like some back pressure involved. You can, I'm trying to be a little animated. Okay, uh, Jason Ricci, great analogy. It's like sucking through a, a straw for a milkshake. Um, but I'm not doing, it's more finesse if I'm just doing the single reed bend. Okay, I can do the same thing on 10. You hear that's gapped a little tighter. I'm getting really close to the the overdraw there. Um, I can recreate that same effect on the blow notes too. I can add that same kind of single read vibrato, I guess for lack of a better term. Six blow. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you can hear I'm getting really close to overblow. It's gotta happen before the overblow. Do that on seven. And seven draw. 
Ooh. Now I got a super expressive note, right? People want to bend the seven draw forever, the seven blow. How come it doesn't do that? If you can play with good technique and um, you know some restraint, you're not hammering on your harps. Uh, now all of a sudden I got a super expressive note. I didn't have to do anything fancy uh, in, in, in terms of modifications to the harp. Okay, so now not only can I play all those notes and I can play those straight, just blow and draw, um, you know, I can use some of the same dip bend techniques I do on the bottom of the harp, and I can use these single reed bends um, like that. And again, it's just a, a whole rocket, um, nothing heavily modified or a customized harp. I don't have my other harps right in front of me, but um, you know, heavily customized. Um, and, and now I have all this cool inflection on the top end of the harp. So, um, you know, that gives you some options beyond just being really flashy and fast. Um, and, and some more tools of, okay, how do I make that dynamic and not just up and down? Um, I love the vibe Sugar Blue gives. Um, you know, as mentioned before, he can be real linear with some of the notes. Um, you hear some of the blow bend movements there, but not so much of the single read bends. Um, John Popper, you can hear it. You can definitely hear that a lot. Uh, if you go back as far as even the stuff recorded around the time of four there's a live disc live from the fall he's doing a lot that uh, of that there and he's even playing some overblows there's six overblows on the song mountain cry on an f harp and you know there's some of that stuff going on that i, I don't think people really realized at the time before um you know people were listening for those things i am probably running over time hopefully this fits into uh you know a, a, a single lesson here but um you know, just showing some of the, the things that, that are out there that you can experiment with when learning the scales. We'll get back into some meat and potato stuff that, that's pretty straightforward and, and really accessible and maybe doesn't involve like a new technique. But um, re really cool to find some ways to be expressive on the high end of the harp. Thank you.